okay, who are the herbs that are going to help us to stay to sleep? I think of valerian. You know, we want something that is like a central nervous system sedative like herb. So I like valerian, but we know that 25% of the population gets stimulated by valerian. Hello, and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. This episode was so much fun for me because I got to sit down with someone who I've taken many classes from online, but have never met in person. Tammy Sweet loves to teach. In fact, it's her superpower. I love taking classes with her so much that I invited her to be a guest instructor in my own cooling inflammation class. I'm excited to have her on the show now to discuss herbs for sleep, as well as her brand new class on getting a good night's sleep. You can find more information about her class and sign up for it using the links in the show notes. And for those of you who don't already know her already, for over 30 years, Tammy has shared her gift of teaching with varying levels of students throughout the country. Her background in physiology makes her an invaluable resource to developing herbalists and health seekers alike who want to deepen their foundation as practitioners. In addition to her physiology expertise, Tammy is also a practitioner and teacher of herbal medicine. Tammy and her wife, Chris Miller, run their herbal apprenticeship at Heartstone Center. Tammy also offers online courses that integrate physiology and plant medicine. She also teaches extensively about growing and medicine making with cannabis, and she's published two books, The Holistic Healing Guide to Cannabis and The Beginner's Guide to Growing Cannabis. Welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, Tammy. Yay. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, It's kind of a strange thing because I consider you one of my teachers because I've taken many classes from you, um, but I haven't really interacted with you until recently and when you're the guest (laughs) instructor for Cooling Inflammation and now this, but that's kind of the interesting thing about online learning (laughs) is that uh, I've spent many hours in the classroom with you, uh, little to your knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) It's fun to be able to spend some time with you. Exactly. I always say to people, yeah, I'm much bigger than this, the little kid (laughs) around and also when you talk to me live you can't pause me (laughs) okay noted noted (laughs) yeah something that I hear a lot from people is that they like know my voice so well and that's kind of how I feel talking to you too I'm like oh I just know your voice so well (laughs) well Tammy I always love to start with how you found yourself on the plant path and it's always interesting to hear all the different weavings that's led you here Mm -hmm. to us today yeah uh for me uh it's it, my mom growing up, you know, I was, I'm a Gen Xer, you know, and growing up, my mom's answer to everything was go outside and play. Hmm. So whatever we were doing and, you know, the house that I grew up in, uh, when I was seven, no, six, we moved there. And every year, uh, my boundaries, my mom would walk out into the woods with me and say, this is how far you can go this year. And so, I spent so much time playing with all my friends out in the woods and it just like, you know, when it was light out until when it was dark, I was outside playing. And, um, and I would say that my first friend was this um, hemlock tree Hmm. across the railroad tracks, you know, in a part of the woods I wasn't supposed to be in but there were these huge old growth hemlock trees that just felt so comforting. And it was really awesome to learn my baby brother, who's five years younger. That was one of his favorite places growing up too. Uh, Yeah. 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 So that was just like being outside. And then 
herbal wise, I would say the, you know, I, I work for Outward Bound, so I would teach things there. But then someone told me about the New England Women's Herbal Conference. And so I went in the late 90s to Sargent Camp. And even though I felt like a tree among the flowers with my basketball shorts and my short hair, I really felt like I found my people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that's, and then I studied with Rosemary and, and there it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I just talked to another guest who had also kind of found her way. It was Mimi Hernandez. Um, this mm-hmm. might be a spoiler. I'm not sure when she's coming out with her episode, but she also went to American Herbalist Guild Symposium. Um, And that was kind of like her first, like, oh, I found my people, which Uh really just to hear those back to back just makes me think about just how important these in-person gatherings are and how they can just be so transformative to go there and find people who are interested in what you're interested in and find like-minded people. And yeah, I'm so glad that they're up and running again. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you are, so normally people come on and they talk about a particular plant and we're doing something a little bit different with you, Tammy, which is, I always love to just switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to talk to us about sleep, sleepy time herbs. And this is something that I'm excited to hear about from you. And you also have a new class coming up, which I'm personally excited about as one of your students. And so, yeah, I'm excited to dive into it. Um, I guess we could start with I mean, you have so much experience. There's so many things you can have taught on, can teach on. Why sleep? Yeah. Um, I, I tend to follow what excites me and what I'm interested in. And, it you know, looking back, I can see, oh, there's the pathway. Um, you know, the one of the first things that I taught uh, the big concept of was inflammation. And for me, it was about, like, I, I think one of the first article blogs I wrote was if I read one more article about um, turmeric, my head's going to explode. Because, <laughs> you know, I just was like, you can't expect one herb to like counteract bad behavior of a whole entire lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So that was the beginning um, of, of just trying to think about of, of crafting how I am as a teacher, which is like, let's look at the big picture and unpack it um, by like what makes sense of millions of years of evolution and what are we actually in denial about or fighting about that and, and understanding this big concept so that we can then apply our infinite creative wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I did pain, I did inflammation, and then I took on cannabis 10 or 11 years ago because I wanted I wanted herbalists to have this plant in their apothecary. I actually didn't want it in the hands of people that only knew one herb. Mm-hmm. And something I and, deeply appreciate from your perspective. And yeah, your perspective you know, yeah. And and I consider cannabis a gateway herb to herbalism. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like okay, well, we'll bring you in through this one plant. But the the top three reasons people come to me with, for to work with cannabis is anxiety pain and sleep Mm -hmm. and i'm always like i have you tried these other herbs like cannabis is not my go-to for sleep right Mm -hmm. and so that's where wanting to know a lot more about sleep than i knew so that i could help people and help help other herbalists think about how to help their clients patients Mm -hmm. clients no we're using clients um (laughs) So that that's why I was like, and, and for about five years, I've been like, oh, I'm going to do a sleep class. Oh, I'm going to do a sleep class. And then what I did is I, I got asked to teach at, oh, the international. And I, I wrote up a blah, a blurb for sleep, which would make me have to research it and teach it. Nice. That's, yeah. that's, that was my process. Yeah. Um, and then as I started to dive into the literature about it, it was like, wow, I should have been teaching this 10 years ago because Mm. the foundation of everything is sleep, Mm. you know, and, and it's not sexy. It's not, you know, you could get away with doing just lifestyle changes and, you know, I don't have to have you buy a pill or my gummies or whatever. It's like, here are some really 
unsexy things um, to to do to help sleep. And then as I've been in, as I was saying to you before, in the blender of like formulating this class, you know, and trying to find, well, what's my voice? What's the unique thing I'm going to bring to it? I got to, oh, there is not a, even though that two out of three adults in this country have sleep issues, there's actually not a sleep problem. It's, it's a denial, Mm. a, a two part thing. One is like, we're in denial and um, we need to grow up. And I, I know I'm, I'm getting older. I'm like denial that we even need sleep. Is that what you mean? Like yes. denial that we need sleep? Yeah. Exactly. Denial that, that sleep is one of the four biological drives with 3.4 million years of evolutionary proof that we need it. Mm-hmm. And then the other piece of denial is that we're in a, a 100-ish year experiment with electric lights. That's actually not going well. Mm-hmm. And so the it's denial- It's getting worse too. It's, it's, getting it's, worse. it's getting worse. And we're getting to see, oh, this is, this is because of technology. Mm-hmm. And, and the part that's asking us to grow up is to do something about it. Because your little passion flower is not gonna counteract the fact that you're on your flat screen until 10 or 11 o'clock at night, like it, you know, they're powerful, but they're not that strong. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that for me is fun to kind of challenge people's perceptions Mm -hmm. and to encourage them to be like, okay, time to, time to grow up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's something when I think of you as a teacher, Tammy, is that you always do have this, um, very holistic approach that is not in any way like cookie cutter. You know, you're looking yeah. at things from a physiological perspective and uh, thinking in really interesting ways about the herbs, but also how we're, like you said, it's not just about the herbs, but all of these other ways yeah. that we can interact. And then with your own special sense of humor, which I really appreciate. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things for me, there's two parts in there. One is like when I'm when I'm preparing a lecture and getting my notes together, I I pretend that I'm teaching to a class of aliens what it mm-hmm. is to be a human. Like, and so Nathan Pyle, like the strange planet cartoonist, I love him. I feel feel that we are, he's my brother, mm-hmm. right? You know, like what does it mean to be a human? And then the the second kind of philosophy I have is that I don't like giving formulas because if you have the information about how something works, you might come up with a beautiful other formula. And I trust that your wisdom and your experience is going to actually, once you like, once I understand how it works, it's like, oh, you like passion flower? Well, I like hops, you know, like, Right. The joke is like you ask 100 herbalists, what's their favorite remedy for anything? And you get 100 different answers. Mm -hmm. It's so great, you know, so creative. Yeah. Well, that seems like a good segue. I know you said that, you know, there's there's no one herb that is going to be the thing. But I'd love to hear about some of your favorite herbs for helping sleep. Yeah. And, and so what the way that I break it up and think about it is kind of three sections. So we'll do three, you know, and then ideally, if you can get one that'll hit all three, ta-da! you know, it's like Mullen or Colt's foot for the respiratory system. You know, it's like, can't lose. Right. <laughs> so um, the first one is like, how, how's this, how's the nervous system? So you know, one component of a recipe could be a lovely, if, if your client's going to be compliant, you know, a nervine that's just going to help handle the tone of an overactive sympathetic nervous system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what's, what's a great one? I love oats, milky oat tops, right? Just like it's nourishing, it's soothing. And so, Anybody could be drinking Nervine tea of milky oats there. Boom. There's, there's one. Then, then the two, like I'm coming up with, I love being able to make products and I love naming them and then designing the label. Like that just makes me happy. Right. So I have a sleepy time tincture, which I sent you the recipe for. 
That's my general, like, I don't know who you are, how you're sleeping here. But I'm coming up with two different like sub remedies. And one is going to be stay asleep. And one is going to be mm. get to sleep. Because those mm. are the two major categories, right? Is like, mm -hmm. you know, a, a problem with sleep latency. I just can't get to sleep at night. And I, I, I go to sleep, but then I wake up at usually what time? Three, right? So if we rule out all the factors, my get to sleep, if you're, right, my favorite herb for monkey brain that just won't shut up is skull cap, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, right, caps the skull. So having a skull cap tincture to help, and, you know, ideally 30 minutes before bed, but, you know, and then it just like, that's part of the, the sleep protocol that everybody glosses over when you talk about, but it's like, how do I just start winding down my nervous system? So oh, I'm so glad that you brought that up. Cause I wanted to talk about that. Um, we, Cause when you said over the sleepy tincture for everybody, you can download that at the show notes and that you, what I really appreciated is that you share, shared dosing information on that, which is kind of what you're talking about right now. So I think yeah. I agree with you that this is something that gets glossed over and people don't understand how important it is. So I really wanted, I just wanted to kind of interrupt you and yeah. make sure we're highlighting this. This is gold right here. Yeah. And, and what I recommend to people is take that dose a half hour before bed, then bring your tincture bottle to bed and put it on the nightstand with a little shot of water and have it right there ready that you don't have to get out of bed. So if you if you take your first dose of tincture a half hour before you go to bed, and then you bring your little setup into bed, if after five or 10 minutes, you're not asleep, do another dose and not have to get out of bed for it. Mm -hmm. And I always say a shot of water because I make my tinctures with organic grain alcohol and that's just mean to take that <laughs> Cowgirl, you know, so right, just put yeah, it right before you go to bed, too. <laughs> exactly. Woo! So, um, so that's the the get get to sleep, and then the stay to sleep. You know, I I just have to say a few things about that. First of all, like common sense things, like how's your bed? Is your bed comfy? Is it right? Like, is that what is waking you up? Do you have pain? Do you have chronic pain that's waking you up? So let's deal with the bed, the chronic pain, um, and then how's your bladder, right? Like if you're like me, I love bubble water. I know all the data, but I give myself a treat at the end of the day and I drink like a quart, a quart of bubble water and then I have to pee in the night. So I'm trying to grow up a little, um, <laughs> but right, the bladder is another issue that we just got to pee in the night. Those, if we rule those out, then it's about well, age, like here's the bummer, is that as we age, we're like, let's let's just say over 50, I'll just be there. The ability to generate what we call a sleep spindle, which is a, a, a brain generating signal that keeps us to sleep. We actually generate fewer of those as we age, so it makes it harder for us to stay asleep. And I'm researching, I haven't found anything like the magic herb that keeps us, you know, make how to make them. I can say that the bummer is that caffeine disturbs that. Mm -hmm. So even if you're like, oh, doesn't prevent me from going to sleep. Well, right. We know that it has a quarter life of 12 hours. And depending on how much you're drinking, it actually disturbs sleep. So caffeine consumption is another issue. And, you know, I'm drinking my bubbly caffeinated water right now. So I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to, okay, who are the herbs that are going to help us to stay to sleep? I think of valerian, you know, we want something that is like a central nervous system sedative like herb. So I like valerian, but we know that 25% of the population gets stimulated by valerian. So then we go into that whole category of GABA uh, neurotransmitter enhancers. So I think of there's passion flower, California poppy. And, and, and I would say that we're going to have to experiment with dosing, but that it's going to have to probably be a little bit higher dose because you want it to hit you at three to four hours of being asleep. Mm -hmm. 
So there are my basic herbs. And then people go, what about cannabis? Do you want me to talk? Do you, would you like me to talk sure. about that? A yeah. Little bit? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where you have to so again, I say to people, have you tried these other things? Right. So then it becomes the important piece with working with cannabis is cultivar selection. Hmm. Like it's, you can think of cultivar selection as complex as the herbal apothecary of choices. Like every cultivar of cannabis is different. And there are cultivars that like sour diesel, I'm going to do math and I'm not going to be sleeping. I'm going to be like, whoa, what should I do now? I'm going to calculate some dosage, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if you do a high enough dose, you'll go to sleep. But I don't want to be groggy the next day. I don't want to be that altered when I go to bed. I, I don't, I personally, I don't like being that altered. So we're, we want something that we can take a very low dose that maybe you're not even altered, but it might help with pain, but it's definitely going to be on the sedating end of the scale. So mm -hmm. it's, it's about, so cultivar selection and then how you take it. So if you're having a hard time getting to sleep, that's when you could do a tincture, low dose tincture an hour before bed. Okay. Some people will say, you know, inhale it. I, I, you know, medicine for, and except for acute situations, we want to be taking oral dosing with cannabis tincture, um, gummies if you must. So, uh, if you wanted to inhale, take, you know, some, uh, calming cultivar, do that right before bed. If you're having a hard time sleep, staying asleep, you want to take a higher dose. It's actually going to just keep you sleeping. So it, that's, so cultivar selection and then dose. Yeah. There. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. I had some questions. Well, let's talk about your sleepy time tincture since that's just a recipe that you've given us mm -hmm. and talk about the herbs in there. Um, yep. And then I want to hear some more about your class. Okay, great. So the skull cap talk and, and it's equal parts. So if you're okay. making you tincture, it's equal parts of all the herbs. So skull cap, going to get the brain calming. And, so, you know, it's, that's not the only thing it does, but it's also a nervine and calming the whole system. Uh, valerian, one of our best sedative herbs and hops. So hops and valerian do the same thing. And you could switch out, you could only do three herbs and you could also replace them if you have other favorite sedative herbs. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth is kava. And, mm -hmm. and you know, this is a, I buy my kava fresh from Tain uh, from Adaptations in Hawaii. He has a, a, a kava co-op, so I know he has really good practices. He has beautiful medicine. And I don't know how long I'll be able to do that. But I can, right now, it is one of the very few herbs that I don't grow and I buy. Mm -hmm. And I love kava as multiple. It's a one of our best muscle relaxants. So if you've got a body component that's going on, you could replace that with cannabis. You could put that as a calming cannabis instead of kava. It's also a nervine right? Mm -hmm. It's soothing to the nervous system. It's really good for anxiety. And then the, the third is that when I was researching and teaching, starting to teach about the heart as an organ of perception, I, I kind of asked the plant world, who, who is a, who's an herb that opens the heart? And it was kava. Hmm. Like kava so I, I also feel like there's this beautiful medicine in kava of when we're going to sleep, our hearts open and, mm. you know, like, and we'll do some dream work, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work on opening our heart in that safe place of sleep. Mm. So that's why I choose those. The other thing that I'll say for people is that, right. If you're, if you don't know, but there's 25% of the, population that has that paradoxal re reaction to valerian um, if you make this tincture and you have heart palpitations or you're very awake it's the valerian and you need to change it out and i've had people go i thought i was having a heart attack at night i was like oh we'll, we'll make a new formula for you 
Yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah, that first time is always the hypothesis, right? And then we fine tune <laughs> after that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that formula. For me, I don't have a lot of sleep problems generally, although just lately I have been having some more, which is mm. frustrating because man, the, the nights I like I generally get good sleep. And so the nights I don't get good sleep is just like it's a really I can just I'm I'm always amazed after those nights of people who have insomnia and have yeah. you know, recurring problems because I think wow how are they operating like I am not operating well this yeah. one time you know um, <laughs> but I love that formula because with the problems I have had with sleep like if I have a cold or something I'm getting over it that those spasmodic coughing can keep me up mm -hmm. and yeah. I rely on valerian and kava for that to you yeah. know, calm that spasmodic coughing so I can sleep um, and then the other thing is occasionally I'll get like restless legs at night and just mm -hmm. when I'm going to sleep. And again, the kava and valerian can be a wonderful way to just yeah. soothe everything and drift off to sleep. And I often feel like when I get those that I'm like, um, I mean, I take the magnesium and everything, you know, like I do things daily, but just sometimes there's a breakthrough restless leg situation. And, yeah. uh, um, and I often think just like, what do people do without herbs? Yeah, you know, exactly. you know, like, cause people suffer with restless legs seriously. I mean, I just yeah. kind of get it once, you know, maybe once a month, but, um, for people who have that every single night and the drugs for it are just not fantastic. And yeah. they, yeah. So anyway, I'm really excited for your class. I'd love to hear more about it. Just what's it going to be like? And, um, what are some topics that you're going to cover? I know you've like seemingly shared a lot with us, but I know that that's just kind of the whole tip of the iceberg as they say. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, you know, I've, the, I'm, I'm getting ready to film it live in front of a studio audience, you know, in front of people. And so I've been cultivating my notes and, but it's as kind of my formula is a bunch of physiology and a deep dive into the geekiness of like non-REM and REM sleep and what happens and why we have it. And, and then a little spattering of neurochemistry to talk about melatonin and adenosine, you know, so the big science, cause it makes me happy. And um, let me just interrupt and say, you teach that so well, because it's not like, I'm not the person who's going to read a textbook on these yeah. things, you know, it'll be in one year and out the other, but you share it in such a way that there's like ahas and um, yeah. you, you know, you draw things together that just make it really interesting. And then I just feel so much more knowledgeable afterwards. Exactly. Like, like exactly. I got it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the way the way I tell people, you know, sitting in class is like, I'm telling you a story and your job today is just to understand the story. Mm -hmm. You don't need to memorize all the players. You can do that later, but we're going to go. I love that when you say an especially long word. I'm like, what? You're always like, you don't have to memorize that. And I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. you know, because it's right. It's a learning thing, right? It's like, OK, just I want to understand the picture and then I'll, if you want to go fill in the vocab words, right? Mm -hmm. And usually I, I write notes, right, that go with the video. And then my training is every time there's a new vocab word for the first time, we bold it so that your mm -hmm. eye catches, oh, there's one of those vocab words, right? Mm -hmm. So there'll be notes, because then I get to draw pictures, which I love doing. Um, but the so the the kind of the breakdown is and my always my formula when I'm teaching is bum you out with some facts that you don't want to know. Right. <laughs> like here's the new one. Ninety percent of adults worldwide worldwide consume at least 200 milligrams of caffeine a day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's our right? favorite herbs right there is our caffeinated herbs <laughs> exactly. like worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. So bunch of facts. Just I, I think of I always think of like I'm a circus person trying to get you to come into my tent. So I'm like, here's some mm -hmm. facts to freak you out. Come in, we'll learn some physiology. And then because I also like teaching the physiology then sets up the framework for, OK, what are the interventions? And then in this in this course, of course, there's going to be herbal interventions. There's like I, I picked 14. I'm like, OK, 14. And, um, and then with sleep, there's so many other things to do besides herbs or magnesium or melatonin, but we'll talk about all of those. But then the other cool thing that I'm excited about is that we'll talk about these other interventions and why we'll do them. 
and then help people figure out their own sleep protocol. Oh, like, cool. So it's kind of a workshop in a way too. Exactly. And so I'm also doing something different. It's four weeks. I'm doing a drip release so you don't get the whole course. So you do this class and then I'm going to do on Tuesdays, I'm going to be doing a Q&A and what I'm calling coaching, which I have a hard time with that word. Like I played at college athletics, right? But I'm going to be coach. Maybe I'll show up with a hat and a whistle or something. Um, <laughs> but, you know, helping people. How's your sleep? Pro you know, I'm going to give assignments. And then on Thursday nights, I'm going to have people teaching, herbalists teaching uh, a, a sleep case study with one herb. Because oh, cool. why not? Right. So yeah. I have Rosemary coming. I have Rosalie that's coming. Not Rosalie. Sorry. Um, Maria Noel Graves, mm -hmm. who's um, just coming out with a sleep book. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. In April, she's I was like, Rosemary was like, hey, do you know this? I was like, no, I did not. So I contacted her. And then um, Kat Meyer is going to do one. And then I've got Kate Gilday coming to film live with me. So she's oh, coming to my fun. house. Oh, fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this, Tammy, because I've all the classes that I've taken with you have been like after the fact. Um, yeah. So this is, I'm excited to get in on the ground level yeah. to, like, and be like, I know you're going to pre-record the classes with your live audience and then release the recordings, which I just think it's great that like um, dual release, which is what I do with my courses too. It's nice to know yeah. that someone's like behind the curtain kind of thing and not just be entirely DIY and everything. So exactly. really appreciate that. And for anybody else who's like, yes, I want to learn about sleep and um, and knows how important this is, whether it's for yourself or you're working with other people, then I definitely recommend checking out Tammy's course. And you can do that in the show notes. There will be a special link for you there. Yay. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm really, truly excited for this. Awesome. Yeah, I, I am excited too. You know, I'm at the point in the process where I'm now excited and not completely. Because the work is mostly done. Yeah. Well, the work is is like going like this, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm on the path. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, you're, I just think you're such a treasure. I've loved learning from you over the years. Oh, so you. I'm excited for this. Well, before you go, I have two more questions for you. Okay. Um, at least two more. <laughs> the first one, I'm curious, at what point did you realize um, that you were gifted with memes? And that you, because I think <laughs> of you <laughs> as the queen of memes, that you like just find the best ones. I don't know if we just have the exact same sense of humor or something, <laughs> but um, I just, so I'm just curious, like, how did that come about, Tammy? You're just like, yeah, oh. Well, well, I think when I became aware of it was after COVID and I started going to conferences and people would say to me, I follow you on social media, media you have the best memes. And I was like, oh, like, so that was when it kind of hit me. But I just, I, for me, social media is like, should be funny or educational. And so, and I, I just try to, and I also try to be funny in a way that doesn't hurt people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so anything that makes me laugh out loud, I want to spread the joy. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me think of Jim McDonald. He often says, like, be the Facebook post you want to see in the world. And like, you're like <laughs> not even of that, you know? So, yeah. I'm stealing that. <laughs> um, so for my last question for you, Tammy, I'm kind of going back and forth between two questions. One, um, it'd be interesting to hear who some of your teachers are. We have one teacher in common that is kind of a not a, mm. not one that people find in common a lot. Um, and then I'm also kind of wondering if you're willing to even answer another one is maybe like a way that herbs have surprised you. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll just ask you both of them. This is me being indecisive in okay. the moment. Let's start with some of your, your teachers who you've learned. Sure. From. Um, uh, today I went out on a, I went on a walk in the woods and one of the things I do is I do a Thanksgiving address and I say it out loud and mm -hmm. gets me in the right place. And so one of the places is when I'm thanking the humans, the two leggeds, I thank my teachers. Mm -hmm. And the order is Rosemary. Rosemary you know, who? Was, just kidding. Rosemary I'm just kidding. Gladstar. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, she who um, needs no last name. <laughs> exactly. Um, and she was my first, 
she was the first person that I called teacher. Mm. And um, yeah, I could cry just thinking about her. Yeah. So, so yeah, she's, perfect. she's like my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, the second person is Pam Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Because I studied uh, plant spirit medicine with her, I did her apprenticeship, that changed my life. Mm -hmm. And my third big teacher is Tom Brown Jr. And uh, mm. I studied with him for about 10 years at the tracker school and, and the, the, the path of classes that I took with him were his awareness classes mm -hmm. and um, his spirit classes. Mm -hmm. And I consider him a master map maker, like mm. of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So those are my, my big three. I also um, consider, you know, I learned some beautiful things from Rocio Alarcon. Mm. Um, and I consider Stephen Buhner, even though I only sat at his feet once at, at Rosemary's Advanced Apprenticeship, his books, mm. I, I own every book, I've read every book, I feel like he is a brother. And, mm. uh, and I am so grateful for what he has offered to the world. Mm. Um, so those are my my big teachers. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. So Tom Brown Jr. is the one that we have surprisingly oh, in sweet. common. Um, that was kind of, I don't know, that was definitely like my inroad into becoming an herbalist. I mm. studied with him in California, not in New Jersey, but I also did the awareness spirit classes and oh, great. ended up studying with Frank and Karen Sherwood, who were his um, yep. head teachers for a while. And that was, Karen was the plant person. And that was kind of how I found my way into the plant world so a lot of gratitude awesome. for that pathway too did you did you go to the yeah. um boy scout camp uh, in uh california yeah yeah oh. that's where i went yeah, yeah. I, I flew out for two classes there um that's oh, well. a anyway, beautiful place there yeah okay the second yeah. question was a oh, way herb have surprised you yeah i'll just throw, well, I'll just throw this surprise question out to you <laughs> yeah i well Okay, this is embarrassing. I'm like All looking right. around. I'm home alone, right? We're talking to, I don't know, lots of people. Lots um, of people. I am amazed at how <laughs> dense I am as a creature where I will be surprised when herbs work. I'm a herbalist. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I teach people this and still, still like, I'm like, wow, this, this shit works, you know? And I'm like, it's embarrassing that like, anyway, so in general, that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the last time was, oh, I made a formula of four different cultivars of cannabis for pain. It's my pain, I call it respite, but I am amazed at how beautifully that works. Mm. You know, I have chronic low back pain. I, I mostly don't, I manage it behaviorally. I don't take a lot of herbs, but then there, I don't take any herbs. And then there are days where it's like, oh my God, I've been in the garden bending over all day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's profound, like how well that, mm. that works and at very low dose. Like I, again, I'm a wicked lightweight, so I don't want to be walking around altered if, you mm -hmm. know, so yeah, I would say that's the latest. All right. Thanks for sharing that. I feel like I'm also the same way. Like after, um, you know, 20 years, I still just am like, I feel like I have that giddy childlike joy. It's like, oh my gosh, that worked. It worked so well. <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's been such a pleasure to sit down with you, Tammy. Thanks so much for taking yeah. time to be on the podcast. It's just been a true pleasure for me. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, me so too. Much. This is lovely. Yay. As always, thanks for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to download your beautifully illustrated recipe card and get a transcript of this show. There you'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch with me. The best way to check out Tammy's new class on sleep is to visit the show notes and to use the affiliate link found there. If you'd like more herbal episodes to come your way, then one of the best ways to support this podcast is by subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I'd also love to hear your comments about this episode. What's your biggest takeaways about herbs for sleep? 
I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get your gold star and this herbal tidbit. Oh, if someone is struggling to sleep at night, then they're often desperate to find that one herb that will help them to finally get deep rest. Sometimes it is as easy as stumbling across that magical herb. But oftentimes it takes a bit of time to figure out what's preventing sleep and the best combination of herbs and practices to restore a healthy sleep function. So for this herbal tidbit, I thought I'd share a bit of herbal vocabulary because there aren't really like necessarily like herbs for sleep or that one herb for sleep, but rather different categories of herbs that we can choose from when we're thinking about herbs for sleep. So a relaxing nervine is an herb that helps your nervous system shift from a sympathetic flight or fight mode to a parasympathetic rest and relax mode. So these herbs, we reach for them when we want to relax the mind, relax the nervous system, and help nudge someone to sleep or just simply nudge people out of a stress response. A great example of a relaxing nervine is passion flower. Sedative herbs are often more, we could say, heavy-handed than relaxing nervines, although there's going to be some crossover between the two. Sedative herbs can more strongly produce feelings of sleepiness, and they aren't often recommended during the day. So valerian is a good example of a sedative herb. Adaptogen herbs can deeply nourish the nervous system and help your body better adapt towards stress. These herbs are often nourishing in some way, not necessarily through vitamins and minerals, although it could be, but more like nourishing to the nervous system. And because of this, that nourishment often takes time to work. So these aren't oftentimes herbs that you just take one day and expect immediate results, instead something you're taking for the long term. An example of this is ashwagandha. There are other herbs we can consider too if somebody isn't sleeping for reasons of pain we could be addressing pain if somebody has like muscular tension or you know like restless legs and we can be thinking about antispasmodics and again herbs blur the line they can fit into multiple categories also the dose you take can really shift how the herbs work so for example chamomile can be a gentle relaxing nervine but when you take it in really large amounts and a strong preparation chamomile can be quite sedative I'm super excited for Tammy's class on sleep, where she's going to dive into all of this and so much more. So check out the show notes to check it out using my affiliate link. As always, thanks for being here and here's to a good night's sleep.